Hi there, this is Paul, the Mystic Guy, and in this episode we're going to use what we've learned so far with the Theme Prompt Editor to start to do some customization work, particularly in the ANSI Message Editor. Now, I'd like to show you, to start with, an issue that's come up with um, a number of users that are members of the FSX network. Here is the test system with our user red72 logged in. And as you can see, there's a few messages here in the various echo areas. In fact, uh, 403 messages in the general chat. And when you press enter on that um, uh, echo area, you see that this is the kind of display that you get. That's uh, showing us that there are new messages. It shows us the message number, the subject, who it's from, and who it's to. And as I page down through the available messages, Obviously things are all tickety-boo, it's just counting up through the messages. Now let me just log out of this for a second and bring across into view uh, the results of me polling the FSXNet hub where I've asked the hub to send me a complete rescan of all the messages that have ever been created in the network. And I'm going to, as you can see, I've got a number of message packets that have come in that are yet to be processed. So now I'm going to run the Mutil mail-in stanza and just watch while this thing sucks in lots and lots and lots and lots of messages. Which hopefully won't take too long, otherwise I'll just have to pause the video and then we'll come back to it. And time has passed, and as you can see, 31,735 echo messages, one net mail, and a few hundred dupes were sucked into the system. Now, if I rerun the uh, login process, and login as read72, and put my password in, jump to the message menu, and call up the area index reader, You'll see now that there's a decent whack of messages, 27,059 that are unread. Now here's where the problem occurs. If you press enter on this, and you can see we're starting at message 404, if I go to press the end key and jump to the end of this, you'll see that it's showing what looks to be like a whole bunch of messages which are the same message number, 2705. In reality, what you're looking at, if I press enter on this, is message number 27059, and if I use the backwards arrow key, it's 27058, and so on. But the problem is that this template that we're looking at is only set up to display four digits for the message number, and that's where the wheels have fallen off, because this particular network that we're looking at, the FSX network, has a lot of messages flowing through it and so it looks a little bit squiffy on the um, the message index listing display. So today's video is all about how do we fix that and to show you what we're going to do I've just brought up a copy of a web browser and on the screen you can see through the web browser I've logged into Agency BBS which is the, the bulletin board that I run and take a look at how this one looks and you can see that on this screen we have uh, four different, uh, sorry, at least five um, numbers on display. You can see that the, um, haven't quite lined up the, uh, the headings correctly, but the subject is still there. From and to, I think I've swapped around from the original example. Oh no, from and to is still the same. But I've also now added in the date. So we've done a bit of a rejig to A, accommodate the issue with the numbers, and secondly also to include some dates. So how do we do this, I hear you say? Well the first thing we should do is minimize this screen and get it out of view. And I'm going to close this window down and fire up the Mystic configuration. From here I'm going into the editor, theme and prompt editor. And for now I'm just going to work on the default theme. Actually no, I shouldn't. I should work on the new one because we'll keep default as default. By going into the prompt editor, we're met with the screen that you would have seen in an earlier video. What I want you to do is use the Ctrl and G keys to go to prompt 399. Prompt 399, 400 and 401 are the three prompts that we need to edit for this exercise. 
As you can see on the screen, just highlighted there, it's a little bit hard to understand what's going on. If I press enter on this, you can see that it's simulating the prompt and it's actually just showing the locations of where some of the data points are actually being rendered across the 80 columns on the screen. Now, to get a better understanding of how this really shakes down, I'm going to go into the Mystic directory, into data, and I'm just going to actually look at the new um, data file for the prompts that we created in an earlier video. And I'm just going to bring that up in Notepad++. And it's nice and large text, and I'll have to just quickly scroll down to prompt 400. Right, so what I have done is I've space them out here so you can see what's going on. So the first thing, this is prompt 399 and above here is some notation and you can see there are some codes that you can add in the ampersand 1 equals the message number, ampersand 2 is the subject, 3 is from, 4 is to and 5 equals new. And if we look at this line here, 3999 what this is saying is prompt 399, color code 12, then a pipe code afterwards, because the color codes have to have a pipe code before and afterwards. And then it puts the um, ampersand 5 in, so that's saying I want to show whether it's a new uh, message. Then we change color code to 7. I can't tell you what that is off the top of my head. Then we have this $L04. Now the $L04, if you go into your documents file and take a look in the display codes, you'll see in section A4 a whole lot of information about text formatting codes. And what effectively this is code is doing is it's left padding the next display code with so many spaces. So if you look at the example down here, $L30, forward slash UN which is another code translates to uh, imagine you'd have 30 spaces followed by the actual uh, username. So study the codes but they'll actually help you a lot in this documentation to understand what's going on in the, the line. And then the rest of the line continues and it actually talks about um, the message number then there is a right padding of 40 characters to the subject, another right pad of 15 spaces to the from, and so on. And then there are a couple of other prompts, prompt 400 and 401, which effectively talk about how uh, the prompt is displaying when you're highlighting or not highlighting something. So to explain that, that is the difference between this particular prompt being active highlighted and then the other prompts not being highlighted so it's, it's referring to that. Now how do we fix this? If I scroll down the screen a little bit so I can get both of the the uh, prompts in and you'll be able to pause the video to actually really study this you'll see that, oops it's just shifted on me, sorry about that team you'll see that firstly there is a new um, code that's been added by Guru, the mystic author, which is the ampersand 6, which equals the message date. So that's a relatively new feature that was added in. It was documented in the what's new, but it was buried in the what's new. Then this is the code that I've applied. I've commented it out at the moment, but it's this line now that actually is making the difference. And you may just want to, in your own time, perhaps copy and paste some of this stuff, or at least code it in and have an experiment. So you could do one of two things. You can either go in through this prompt editor and actually go in and edit the, the line. So you know, make that instead of 15, make that 16 and so on. And then escape out and save that. So this allows you to do it from this level. And the other way is simply just to get into the actual text file. Um, I probably wouldn't do it like I am with this, you know, uh, prompt configuration software having its focus on the same data file, that's probably not good good practice, but I'm just trying to show you both ways in. For me personally, I find it somewhat easier to edit using something like Notepad++, but clearly the benefit of doing it this way 
is that you can very quickly simulate uh, what those prompts look like with the highlight on, highlight off, you see. Um, and then the end here is this is showing you the, the, uh, the current prompts. So what I'll do is I'll just escape out of that back to here. I'm now going to uh, comment out what was the uh, original prompts for 399, 400 and 401. I'm going to uncomment the revised prompts and save this. And then I'm hopefully going to get, if I go into the theme editor this time, into new prompts go to prompt 399. Now you'll see that I've got an additional um, prompt which is, uh, sorry, an additional placeholder which is number 6 and you'll see that the spacing has changed too, particularly for the first one which was the message number. So if I get out of this, I'll just go back to this point here and come back here. I'm not sure whether this changes instantly. We'll have a look. Uh, I suspect not. Certainly doesn't look it, does it? So what we'll do is we'll goodbye, log out altogether. I will minimize a few screens so we're not too confused by what we're looking at. Now I'll log back in as red72 and I will go into the message section, area index reader and <laughs> oh I know why you know why it is? It's because I'm on the wrong theme. I'm actually using the default theme. So there's a little uh, learning moment for both of us. So to change my theme, you might recall from an earlier video, I want to go back to the main menu. I want to go into my account settings and change my theme which was K and I'll make it the custom theme. If I get out of that and go back into the message side of things, I think we should find Oh yeah, look at that. Can you see there's a bigger gap? And now we've got the dates over here on the right hand column. So if I go right to the end, uh, ooh, that doesn't still quite look right. Oh yes it does. I'm in the wrong... Somehow or other I don't seem to have... Oh here it is here, general chat. There we go. I was just looking in the wrong message base. So there we go. Now that fixes the display of the data but it doesn't fix the header up here that says subject from and to. How do we do that? Right, well the way to do this is to jump into your Mystic directory and head to your text directory and have a look for a file called ANSI MLST and you need to install software that allows you to edit and save ANSI art and I'm running a Windows 10 64-bit system which is not ideal in fact when I did make the change on my bulletin board I was using a copy of the old 1990s The Draw and running it on a Windows XP box I think it was so far all I've found that comes close to looking at ANSI artwork in this environment that I'm on is uh, a program called Pablo Draw, which if I run, and I'm hoping it'll just fire up for me, there we go, you can see there it is displaying the, um, the ANSI file with the various codes. In fact you can see here there is a uh, pipe code CL to clear the screen and then there is the heading, the subject from to and so on. So what you would do is you would use your favorite ANSI editor to just edit this section of the screen of the artwork and then make sure you save everything in its entirety again uh, but in this case it's just making sure that the subject from to date and all the other bits and pieces you want to put in match up with the columns that you set when you define things using what I've showed you earlier in this video. I'm not going to go and re-tweak this artwork right now, I think we don't need to do this. The point being, you just need to know that if you want to change the, the headings, or at least the position of the headings and whatnot, that's the file to use. So with that, I think we'll uh, stop the video, but I hope that that has been really helpful to you. 
and as always please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye for now.